moving our way to the side of the hull. It brings us here to the side axis hatch. The entire M3 Lee kind of resembles something like a bank vault as opposed to a military vehicle. And that's also seen here on the armored hatches. The hatches themselves are made out of two pieces. We have the actual hatch and we have a vision port. The vision port is also hinged from the hatch. The hatches that you see on this vehicle are from EastCoastArmory.com and are cast in resin. The hatches are fully functional and have their interior detailing present. The vision port itself is also fully functional and opens up. This style hatch is a mirror image on the opposite side of the model. Moving our way to the 75 millimeter armament of the tank. The one striking defining feature of the M3 Lee is its Sponson mounted 75 millimeter gun. A lot of people wonder what were they thinking installing the gun in this location. The purpose of that was because at the time the tooling required to have the 75 millimeter gun fitted in a fully revolving turret wasn't yet developed yet. Because of that they utilized the tooling that was on hand to mount the 75 millimeter gun into a tank be it in a smaller style format and that is of the side Sponson. Now on the M3 Lee the entire tank is really comprised out of rolled steel plate however this whole portion here is actually made out of cast metal. Because this portion here is made out of cast cast texture is added to all of the cast boundaries. In addition to the casting you could also see the tarpaulin clips mounted along the perimeter of the gun. Purpose of the tarpaulin snaps is to snap on a canvas protection bag that would protect the 75 millimeter rotor from any type of dirt and debris. Now one feature that I built into this model is the fact that the 75 millimeter gun can not only elevate but can also rotate as well. All of the equipment that you see here in order to make the, the component function is all scratch built. The barrel itself is made out of turned PVC as well as the rotor itself. For the trunnion this here is made out of resin and is all machined down to have the tolerances to make it function. Also to prevent the barrel from drooping, a spring system is set up on the inside to prevent the barrel from sagging. The entire unit bolts to the top portion of the vehicle and is very realistic in that the system was similarly done on the actual tank. Mounted to the front of the barrel is a counterweight. The counterweight's job is just, as the name implies, it's to have some kind of weight on the end of the barrel which aided in the gun's elevation and getting it on target. The counterweight itself is comprised out of two pieces that would be bolted together. The counterweight that you see here is an accessory listed on eastcoastarmory.com. Moving our way to the model's front fenders. The fenders on the Lee had a very similar appearance to that on the M4 Sherman, only the M4 Shermans were much shorter. The fenders that you see on this model are made out of sheet metal and are all pressed and soldered together. The rigidity blisters that you see here are actually pressed into the plate and actually do serve that function of making them rigid. All the components that you see mounted onto this component here are all soldered together for extra, for maximum amount of strength. The actual brace that we have here is bolted to the tank and all the bolts that you see here are not just for detail but also is how the fender is mounted to the vehicle. On the front portion here there's some more tools. This is where the pickaxe head itself gets fitted and on this location here would be a tripod for one of the tanks M1919 machine guns. Here I have one of the tripods it would fit in this location here and leather straps would tie it down and prevent it from ever getting loose. Moving our way from the fender work, we have here 
the tank siren, as well as the headlight cluster. The tin work is very similar on the opposite side of the vehicle, in that it's where the headlights get fixed. And this fender here, just like on the opposite side, is also made out of pressed and soldered sheet metal. The one difference is that the rigidity strip follows a different contour as the one on the opposite side. And also is a lot shorter because it doesn't have to meet up with the 75mm Sponson. However, it's still bolted to the tank, just like the real one. On this quarter portion of the tank is where the driver would sit. Because of that, we have a nice angled surface here to deflect any rounds, as well as another functional vision port. And over here, you can see another tripod for the M1919 machine gun. One thing you'll see in this video is that the M3 Lee had lots of M1919s in it, and all of which needed their tripods, in case the crew were to take the guns out of the tank to set them up in a static position. Another no notable feature on the M3 Lee series is the fact that on this plate here, if we notice the fasteners running across the bottom are not rivets, but are actually slot screws. Also, while I'm on this portion here, one thing that you'll notice about my model is that I etched in all of the panel lines on each of the panels. Each line was etched in with a Dremel Multimaster, and these panel lines are all present on the real mod or on the real vehicles. By adding the panel lines, really gives the model a lot of detail fidelity. Moving on to the headlight, as we can see, the headlight is in a different format as it is on later versions of American tanks. The early units had their headlights affixed in as a cluster. You have the main headlight here and next to it you have the blackout light. It's mounted on a base which is bolted to the fender and then the electrical conduits emerge from the rear portion of the unit via conduit and enter inside the vehicle. Moving on from the headlight brings us here to the driver's dual M1919 machine guns. The M3 Lee originally was designed to have two M1919s affixed to this position here in this armored casting. The purpose of these 1919s is so that the driver can actually fire the guns and as to aim them he would rotate the entire tank to do so. This feature here was dropped a little bit later on in the production life of the, of the Lee. However, the original M4 Sherman had this feature carried on into it, and it's mounted in the center portion of the hull. However, I am not aware of any Shermans that actually equipped the components of the 1919s on the tank. However, the casting is present on several of the units. As for the unit here, it's modeled to have the two... 1919s fitted, and this unit here, as well as the headlight cluster, are also listed on ECA. Moving up to the driver's visor, the front portion of the Lee had a opening visor port, very similar to that of like a T-34. The visor would open up, and a small handle here would dangle down, and the driver would then position it in this little pivoting mount over here purpose of it is just like you see here on the model to keep it in the open in the open position in addition to the piece being functional it's also extremely detailed with all of the locking equipment present in addition to the visor being able to open it can also rotate as the periscope itself is mounted on a drum that is controlled by this handle lever here the driver can actually grab it and adjust it to better get a better view of the exterior portion of the vehicle. This component here with all the details is another uh, component found on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. Moving to the model's top deck, we can see here the top portion of the 75mm gun rotor. Like I mentioned before, it was a solid cast unit that at the foundry was then machined in order for all the parts to slide in perfectly. On the top portion here of the unit is the rotor. The rotor is held on with a securing plate with fasteners, as well as another plate with another row of fasteners. This portion here is the periscope in order to 
aim the gun. Now on the real M3 Lee, this scope here can not only elevate, but also rotate with the gun. Unfortunately on my model, it's static and it does not rotate or pivot as it stays in its place over here. Also as we can see on the top portion of the deck, which is very striking for the Lee, are these two rigidity braces that we have on the top deck. They, what these braces do is they give the top deck extra support to hold the load of the turret that's affixed to it. It's made out of a round bar on top of a T piece of steel and it is riveted to the tank's plate. On this location here we have a hatch, probably for the loader for the 75mm gun, as well as it can also double as an escape hatch in case the tank gets hit. The hatch you see here is non-functional, it's just for detail only. The little hatch retention latch that you see here is spring-bound and is functional even though the hatch isn't. Moving our way to the tank's turret, the tank features a 37 millimeter gun. This is the same gun found in the Stewart series. The gun itself is from EastCoastArmory.com. As you can see adjacent to it is a coaxial M1919 machine gun. Now the mantlet that you see here is actually comes with the Plastic Panzer's kit and is made out of solid cast resin. The mantle itself is very nicely done. In fact, all the details that you see on it are original from the original mantle. The only modification that I made to it was the elevation periscope here as well as the gun elevation was molded static on the Plastic Panzer's kit. I modified it so that the unit not only go up and down, but it is in line with the periscope, and the periscope also moves with the gun, as you can see here. The row of fasteners that you see here were originally molded into the casting, however, to mount it into the tank, I replaced the molded in castings with real fasteners, and this piece here is actually bolted to the turret, just like on the real tank. The turret can rotate 360 degrees and will not come off as the turret itself is bolted to the tank like I like to do on all of my 1.6 scale models. The vision slit that you see here is also fully functional. Just like with the other cast components on the tank, the cast texturing was added to this rotomold turret here, giving it for a little bit more of a realistic look. Also, if we notice, the tank is painted with a yellow stripe and star. The yellow markings were common on vehicles of this time period, and the yellow replaced the white stripe that was seen slightly earlier. When the U.S. Army entered the war in North Africa, their tanks were fitted with yellow stripes and stars that you see here. As for the tar casting itself, the armored blister was also added, as it was absent from the kit, and the little blister mounts that we see here were also affixed. The purpose of these three little mounts is that on the real tank these are actually threaded and you would screw in eyelets into these three locations here and the eyelets would then hook up to the cables and you could rem extract the tar from the hull via a crane. This eyelet procedure was done on the M3 Lee and was also carried over into the very early versions of the M4 Sherman. However, on the M4 Sherman, these were quickly phased out and replaced with the standard large hook system that we see on that, which is standardized on all those tanks. On the top portion of the turret, we have some cast numbers and foundry marks, as well as three slot screws, which are located adjacent to this casted in nub. All these details are found on the real M3 leaves. Finally, moving on to the last bit of detailing and features on the model, it leads us to the tank's commander's copula. The copula that you see here is not your standard type of vision copula that you would see on a Sherman or on any other type of tank. The copula itself is actually a mini turret. The commander's copula itself that you see here was a resin casting that was supplied with the original kit. The casting itself was properly scaled and was correctly sized. The detailing was adequate 
and not a whole lot of modifications were made to the exterior portion of the copula. What was made, though, was that I decided to make the copula just like the real tank in that it, too, can rotate 360 degrees. The, the mini copula is actually held on via locks like you would expect to see on a 135th scale tank. But in addition to having the turret rotate, the gun can also pivot. In addition to having the 1919 go up and down, it was also capable of going left and right as well. So as you can see, the commander can get a nice arc of motion with his machine gun without having to rotate his entire copula. Now, this rotating feature is not found on the plastic Panzer's casting. His is just a solid resting casting, and all of this here was hollowed out and machined to make it perform in this manner. In addition to making the gun and the, the, mini, and the mini turret do all of this, the copula itself can also open. Now, on the M3 Lee, the hatch opened up almost like, similar, I guess you'd call it like an accordion-style hatch, where it would pivot this way, and then it would pivot this way. As you can see, there's a little hatch retain, re retention latch over here that would keep the hatch in its open position and not have it wobble around while the tank is going off road. While on the hatch, as you can see, the interior portion of the hatch has also been detailed. You have a retention latch over here and you also have a flare pistol port on this portion as well. The pistol port detailing is also present on the reverse side of the turret. And finally, in addition to having the turret, the mini turret do all these functions, the mini turret also features a full detailed interior. The full detailed interior includes everything from headrests to the vision port opening mechanism and locks, backrests. The interior also features the equipment for the M1919 sighting system. A counterweight spring for the 1919 and the 1919 itself. For the tanks M1919 the model features a Dragon M1919 plastic kit. The kit itself is very nicely done and is very highly recommended. The gun itself is built mostly out of the box. Included with the gun is the cloth ammo belt with 30 odd six rounds in it. Everything was painted as the kit itself is left in its virgin raw material coloring. The kit also included the tripod which you've seen earlier in the when mounted to the side of the tank as well as several ammo boxes and the T&E mount in order to fix it to affix it to the tripod all these components for the 1919 I keep in the one storage box on the rear portion of the tank now the cover tray the, the, the cover plate can actually open up but by doing this the belt will fall out and I don't feel like probing on the inside of the model to recover the belt. The ladder sights were also fully functional and pivot up and down. As well as the charging handle is also spring assisted and when you charge the gun it will return it back to its home location. Now just like with the turret, as we noticed the mini turret also has three threaded lifting lugs in order for the eyelets to remove the turret slash copula from the hull or from the turret. Now one thing that's unique about the M3 Lee is that pre-World War II the army wanted to have the tank commander have his own separate mini turret with a machine gun in it. One complaint from the field was that the addition of this component here elevated the tank silhouette too, too high and it made the tank a more easy of a target. In fact, when the British received several versions of the M3 Lee, they had the, tarred rep the mini tart replaced with the low-profile copula from the M3 Grant. What's interesting is that after World War II, with the M48 Patton, the same exact 
design came back in having the, the tank commander having his own mini copula. This also went into the M60. However, some of the reports from the field, as well as the Israelis, were that the mini turret increased the silhouette of the tank and made it an easier target. And the Israelis themselves replaced the mini turret with the low profile Erdan copula. So it's very interesting how history tends to repeat itself. And that concludes this model showcase video for this 1-6 scale M3 Lee. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds, as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.